Hey, Tim Sykes here. Pretty successful day. Um, I made roughly, a, I guess, a little under a thousand today, um, dollars, which is pretty cool. But I also did some other good stuff. I swam in this badass pool. This is my pool I took a picture of here while I am in New York. Um, but this video lesson is not just bragging about my day or, you know, my trades. It's helping you understand how to adapt to price action because too many people aren't doing it properly. Um, I only made a few hundred dollars on this CRBP trade, but this was probably one of my best trades uh, in quite a while. Not because of the gain, not because of the small percentage gain, but because I really, really timed it well and I reacted to price action. Um, oh, and by the way, before I forget, I'm going to talk about SKLN. Uh, also, I was buying this uh, several times in the 18 cent a share range. It's now at 20 cents, so I'm only up like a penny, a penny and a half. Um, but it just had its first green day um, with huge volume. You know, it's run in the past for multiple days. Here it had a green day and it had a second uh, green day. You can see the two big volume bars right here. Same thing. Uh, it had a big green day here. And even though it didn't finish strong the second day, it had uh, some follow up. And then here you have one green day and another day of follow up, uh, second green day. So the past three times that it's had a big green volume spike, it has also uh, extended the next day. And that is what I am looking for when I buy a stock. I want to see the possibility of if it can go further. And while this, you know, I don't like buying stocks usually this low or this, you know, not so volatile. I mean, it was up 20%, but it's only three cents a share. Um, but I am interested in stocks that A, can go supernova as this has, you know, it, it did spike from 10 to 30. Um, and I actually bought it this day. Um, what was it? Ugh, I don't even remember. Maybe it was here. One of these days I, I wrote it for a few cents a share and that was nice. Um, but now I think that this can spike again. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still recovering from <clears throat> my conference last week. I, I lost my voice. Um, or this week. Uh, this was the news this morning on SKLN. They have this waste fluid disposal system. Who knows? Who cares if it's going to work? Um, but they had three proposals approved at a special meeting. And that's cool. But what really gets me interested, okay, you improve, you know, more shares. You're going to do a reverse split so that, you know, you don't seem so pathetic. But and I'm going to tell you like it is, you know, this is not a good long term company. But for me, I'm not investing in this for the long term. I'm investing in this or actually buying this, not even investing. I'm buying this for a day two spike. And this is why I think we're going to get a day two spike next week. Uh, right here, this one specific sentence. And it's not even in, you know, the summary. But they say, we also expect to discuss our plans for maintaining our listing on NASDAQ with the exchange as soon as possible. And if you go back and you look through their boring SEC filings, you would know that they have until early October to figure this out. So when they say as soon as possible, I don't know if they're going to have a press release next week. What I do know is that they have now put something in the future where they are going to have a plan to stay listed on the NASDAQ. And that will involve getting their stock up, which is why they do the reverse split. Maybe they're going to raise some money. But in order to raise money, you're going to have to raise the stock price because no one just wants to invest in you know, such a tiny company. And this is where it gets interesting. So how are they going to raise money? How are they going to raise their stock price? They also say this. We believe Skyline Medical is now positioned to achieve the milestones we anticipate, including expanding sales of Streamway to U.S. federal agencies. So now they are basically teasing you that they are going to have positive news in the next few weeks with the NASDAQ and with you know a U.S. federal agency. Um, that is fantastic. This is why I love these small companies. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand what they're trying to do. You just have to know where to look. Too many people look at this and they just see, oh, it's just a, you know, a shareholder conference. Uh, okay, so they approved a few things. But look at the language. These companies are basically cheerleading themselves and pumping their own stocks up. So this is why I like to piggyback it. And you know, this is why I'm up woohoo, a penny and a half on my position. But I held it for several hours. Um, I really like the way that it closed. 
and you know closing near the highs and now it's up a little after hours you know i fully expect this thing to retest this this intraday high of 20.5 um, and then, you know, if you look at a, a longer term chart, you know, it has really resistance at like 24. I don't know if we can get up to 24. You know, that would be another 20% uh, move. But I would love to sell anywhere in the low 20s. Also, it should be noted that this is the first big green day after several days of uh, consolidation. So here was a green day and the second day it ran up. Uh, here was a second. Here was a, a big green day. And then guess what? It gapped up and spiked the next day, even if it finishes lower. And then another day, it gapped up. And even if it finishes lower, I'm not interested in what it finishes at Monday. Um, I highly doubt that I, I will hold this stock all day Monday. But I am very comfortable holding this stock over the weekend. I have had several of my biggest gains recently and in my career holding stocks for the weekend. So I don't know if they're going to come out with a press release on Monday. But I do know that this kind of language saying, you know, we anticipate federal agencies and, you know, we expect to discuss our plans for maintaining our listing. I don't know why some people can't see this. Some people are like, Tim, this press release is nothing. For me, I guess it's just experience. Like I've been trained to look at, at how press releases are read um, and written. So when they say we also expect to discuss our plans, you know, as soon as possible, um, and let me just scroll down here as soon as possible. I mean, this is in the next two weeks. So sometime in the next two weeks, they're going to do this. I will not be holding if and when, you know, they, let's say the stock spikes on Monday and then there's no press release. I'm not going to be holding, looking, you know, waiting for this press release. But what I do like is that this news just came out this morning. So this is new news that you can use to really say, wait a minute, this is an upcoming news kind of play. Uh, no different than a, a little while ago, I bought OPTT. Uh, where was it? In one of these here in the high sevens. And they didn't release the news that I that I wanted. Um, I think it was, it was right here. I was buying it at 790. There was, uh, you know, the, the federal website specifically said that they want a contract. I thought that they would have news on that Monday. They didn't. But I still got a gap up and, you know, it was a nice opportunity to sell into that gap up for a small profit. Um, but they actually reported bad earnings. And after the bad earnings, they released the news of the big contract. And for one minute, this stock spiked from the sevens to the nines. But if you had your sell order ready, you could be prepared. Um, this is a low flow play. You know, SKLN is not necessarily a low flow play. So I could put my sell order at 26 cents. It's probably not going to get executed. But because it's not a low flow play, you can get in and out much quicker. And, you know, frankly, I'm, this is why I'm up, um, you know, a penny, a penny and a half. I could take profits right now and lock in, I don't know, like $500, $700 in profits. But I think that this can spike more given the news and given that this news, I think, has legs because too many people don't recognize it as quickly as I do. And this is why I love teaching because I want you to read press releases like this and recognize it. And, you know, I, I'm glad a few of you do because you can see here, you know, right when the news came out, I mean, it automatically spiked in the first 15 minutes, um, you know, roughly three cents a share. So people did recognize the news and then it, you know, kind of faded because I probably people got ahead of themselves. Um, I was not a fan of this intraday breakout. If you guys were in my chat room, you saw me being like, don't break out, don't break out, don't break out. I don't like when stocks break out in the middle of the day. It's a waste uh, because most midday breakouts fail, which is exactly what happened here. But it closed right at its highs, and now after hours, it's up a little bit. So we're in good position. Watch this on Monday. I'm sorry to, to talk about it, but I, I'm really excited about how much patience I had because I've been working on patience, you know, trading with a small account. I'm trying to hold longer. I'm trying to let the chart do its thing. Um, and there were times when I could have gotten out. Well, I guess I never really had a loss, but I could have gotten out like roughly break even. But I was like, no, you know, I want to give this time. Ooh, look at that. Someone just bought 20,000 shares at 20.45. So now I'm up two cents a share. Now I'm up over a thousand if I wanted to sell. I'm still not going to sell just yet. I want to see what, what can happen on Monday. Um, but enough about this trade. I want to talk about this less exciting, but much, much more important, um, well-executed kind of trade on CRBP. So CRBP, um, 
you know, I've been looking at it as a potential short, frankly, just because it's up so much. It's a ridiculous supernova. Today was a first down day potential. And so I missed the, the morning um, spike. It's, it's scary to short this, but it did have a nice, you know, dollar a share drop. Then the question is, can it drop some more? And, you know, the, the morning low was like seven. The midday low was seven ish. It did get here to like 695, but you know, that's not a convincing breakdown in here like 690. But these aren't really convincing. So it started to pop again here, 720. I was shorting it in here because I was thinking, you know, it's it tried to bounce once to 730, then here to 720, and then here to like 715, 710. So it's having lower highs. And I thought that if it cracked, you know, below 7, 695, and definitely 690 we would get some true panic. You know, this stock is up so much over the past few days. Um, I, I really thought that we could get some panic and it just didn't happen. Uh, with CRBP, you know, it dropped, but only to like the 675, 680 level. And I was like, what is that? You know, like I shorted it at roughly 705, but I'm not interested in making 10, 20 cents a share. If I'm gonna short a scary stock like this, I want to see a big panic, and sometimes you can get these big panics, especially on a Friday afternoon. Um, so when it did not panic, I said, you know what? Time to react to the price action, react to what the chart is telling me. Even though this is a potential first down day, A, short selling is very scary lately, especially you know in a stock like this, that this is not like up for one or two days. I mean, this is, this is one of the strongest stocks, if not the single strongest stock that I see right now. So it's not necessarily going to go quietly if and when it does tank. Um, secondly, you know, even though I'm I'm winning when it's at 690, 685, it's not a very convincing breakdown. The stock is already a dollar a share off its highs. We're on a Friday afternoon. Me as a short seller and knowing how short sellers think, you don't really want to be short. You know, a scary stock over the weekend especially if you have solid profits. Anybody who shorted in the mid or high sevens can just take those profits and say, eh, you know, maybe I'll short it again next week. And that's exactly what happened. So I covered in the 670s, 680s. Some people were like, ah, Tim, you always cover too early. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm playing it safe. Um, I did not get the big panic I wanted. I, I'll take the few hundred dollars, that's fine. But mainly I cover to protect myself in case it does squeeze. And you know, over like 20, 30 minutes, it, it got up to like 695. So I, I saved myself like 10 cents a share, but there wasn't really a squeeze until with about 10 minutes to go. Um, and that's when it squeezed from seven to 720. And, you know, if I did not cover in here, I would definitely would have covered in here and I would have covered for, you know, a small loss. So understanding how to short sell, understanding, you know, when you want a big panic and if you don't get it, if this were, let's say, you know, the first red day, you know, what, what was it? Uh, 702 was the, the closing price. Let's say, pretend that somehow I gapped down a dollar a share and, and the actual close was like $8.02 and I'm shorting it in here. And I'm shorting it when it's already red on the day. That's a different story than me shorting a stock that has already dropped a dollar a share and could still come back. I mean, for all we know, this could retest 790 on Monday before it it ends. Um, you know, th these beasts don't go quietly. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes I, I could have been totally wrong and this could have just kept panicking. But by playing it safe, I don't worry about it over the weekend. I don't risk it over the weekend. It's easy to borrow. This is another thing with my trader checklist DVD. If you've been watching it, uh, you have to consider how easy is it to get in or out. If this were a hard to borrow stock and I'm so grateful for the borrows that I got, then I might not have covered all my position. I might have only covered half or I might not have covered anything because it might be difficult to get back in short. But this was easy to borrow at Interactive Brokers and E-Trade so I can easily get back in next week. Um, I also am considering, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about my SKLN position because this one, frankly, I can make more money on because, you know, I'm, I'm more comfortable with this pattern, especially in this market and this news and this chart and this price action. So you have to focus on what you know. And many of you guys are just starting. Um, it was a great honor to meet so many of you at my Vegas conference. And thank you to those who tuned in via live stream also. But if you don't have a lot of experience, 
this is why I make these videos because I'm making trades based on years and years and decades of experience. Every single trade I do, it's not just, oh, this is my first time seeing a potential first red day. This is probably like my 600th time. SKLN, this is probably my 1,000th time seeing and, and holding a stock over the weekend. So I trade based on the past um, and my experiences. Past performance is indicative of future returns, at least with penny stock trading. NBAX, so many people were all excited about this morning spike. I was like, don't get so excited. This is a junk pattern. This is my bad sushi example in chapter, what, 12 or 13 in my free trader checklist guide. And guess what? It tanked all day. And frankly, I'm very glad that I told people because I saved them from believing. Some people were thinking, oh, this is going to $2. This kind of stock could go to $2, but this is not a good pattern to buy when a stock is down 80% or 70% or 60% in the day. If you watch my trader checklist guide, which frankly, you have no excuse not to because it is a 100% free guide, go to traderchecklist.com, go watch it. You have until October 1st until uh, I'm going to really just start going over that trader checklist guide in every single video and every single alert because right now only there's been like 100 people have watched all 11 hours, which is pathetic. Um, if I was a new student right now, I would be watching all of Trader Checklist. I would spend my entire weekend on it. It all depends on how much you want knowledge and success. And when I give you a free guide out of the goodness of my heart and because, frankly, I just can't deal with so many questions anymore. If I'm going to introduce this numerical grading system, which I did in Trader Checklist, I'm not going to have the patience to deal with people who are asking about it and not watching the guide. So I want everybody watching the damn guide by October 1st. Um, you have two weeks. And after that, you know, nonstop, every video lesson, every alert, every watch list is going to be talking uh, specifically about, you know, numerical grading systems and, and how to grade different stocks. But let me just do a quick grading right now. Um, this is my little ticker um, form for the trader checklist. Let's see, what ticker shall we do? Um, and I know I the trader checklist was, was kind of rushed before I went to the Maldives. I have not even gone into the chapters about short selling yet. I'm gonna be adding to the trader checklist DVD. But let's go right now, just talk about SKLN when I was buying it at 0.18 and adding to my position in the mid 18s. Pattern and price, you know, it's a little too low for me, but the pattern, uh, as I explained earlier in this video, shows that it can spike for multiple days. So it's not a perfect supernova. It's not a perfect breakout. Um, I'm dip buying it, which lessens my risk, which is good. I'll give this a 13 out of 20. Uh, risk reward, because I was dip buying SKLN. Let me talk about this for a second. Uh, buying it in the 18s and then on the dip in here. You know, my worst case scenario is like somehow it's going to come down to like 0.176 and I'll lose like half a penny or three quarters of a penny. Um, so not much risk. And if I'm right at, I think my average is like 0.185 roughly. Um, I think it can go to like 0 0.22, 0 0.23, maybe even 0.24. So call it five cents of upside and one cent of downside. That's a five to one risk reward. That is superior. Um, ease of entry and exit, I can get out very easily. It trades very liquid. I think it traded what, 30 million shares today? 35 million shares. Um, past performance history of spiking, as I said, it has spiked for multiple days in a row, although not like, it hasn't gone true supernova. So I'll give this an eight out of 10. Uh, what time is it personal schedule? I was specifically aiming from my first buy uh, for uh, a morning spike on Monday, although I was buying at midday today. So it wasn't the best time for me and my personal schedule right now is clear. So I'll give this a 16 out of 20. Uh, reason catalyst, you know, you have that upcoming news, which is pretty good. I don't know exactly what day it's going to be. So I'll give it a seven out of 10 market environment. You know, we've been a little shaky lately. Um, this is not, you know, the strong bull market of, of July or August. So, uh, I'll give this a five out of 10, but still it adds up to a 79 out of a hundred. Um, you know, this is within my, my boundaries. I want to take trades that are ranked between 70 and a hundred. And that's why I think SKLN uh, is, a, is a pretty good buy uh, in the 18th. I wouldn't necessarily be chasing it. I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, a big uh, Monday spike and then it fade. Um, I'm specifically in this as people 
see this news over the weekend, they see this price action, they see this chart breakout over the weekend, and a lot of people like to put in buy orders right at the open. So I would love to be selling into a big spike on SKLN 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, if so happens. Uh, we'll see. You know, I could be wrong on any trade, but I like my odds and I like my trader checklist numerical grading on this, on the psych sliding scale. So I'll see you guys in the chat room on Monday. I'm very excited. And some of you guys, I will see you live on an all-day webinar. I'm giving a virtual uh, um, trading day where you're going to be able to see my screen all day. And that's going to be for some of you guys. I'm excited. Thank you. Have a good weekend.